Now, Angola was the second star on that black town list that I showed you. And it is part of a team project that I'm involved with that uh, we are still looking for. And that's why the title of the project is Looking for Angola. It was located, we believe, at the confluence of two rivers around the Ta Sarasota, Tampa Bay area. And it was a very strategic point because they could see um, uh, ships coming in and out. It was a way for them, an easy way for them to receive goods, etc. cetera. But um, it was destroyed in 1821. And since uh, in contemporary times, there's been a lot of development around that area. So we may never really have the opportunity to find Angola, but we know that it existed because of documents. The villages, the Seminole villages, uh, were being destroyed constantly, and they were being dispersed. And so a lot of people wound up in this particular area. They, so this particular settlement was not just a black town or a Seminole village. It contained all kinds of people, Seminoles, black Seminoles, free people, and people who were escaping from plantations wound up there also. And it was in existence, we be believe, between 1812 and 1821. In 1821, General Andrew Jackson, no friend of, <laughs> of blacks or Indians, decided that he wanted to destroy this thriving community. I mean, they had miles of crops, they were, th they were thriving. And that was totally unacceptable to him. And so he requested of the Secretary of War that he be able to go in and destroy it. The Secretary of War said no. So Jackson came up with a different plan. He decided to recruit some of his Indian allies, the Kaweta Indians, and they came in and destroyed Angola. So in this battle, there were about 300 people captured according to records. But we only have what happened to 59 of them actually documented in the documents that we've located so far. And I must mention that part of the team of looking for Angola is an historian, Cantor Brown Jr., who has done incredible work in finding these kinds of documents that give us information about uh, what exactly happened. Uh, as you can see this list, it says, the the following is a correct statement of the disposition made of the Negroes on the enclosed descriptive list. Some were delivered to people as they were previously owned by, but what the arrow points to is that nine of them ran away after their capture. And on this is part of the list of the names of the people that they had captured. Their names, their description, their color, their skin color, most were black, some were yellow, meaning they were mulatto or mixed, possibly mixed in, 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 with Indian or with uh, white. And you see their former owner is also listed. And I've starred two of these people for a reason. One of the things that happened when I did uh, a year of research in the Bahamas, which is where some of the black Seminoles escaped to, none of the descendants there knew about the specific place in Florida where their ancestors came from. And so that was a question in my mind about how are we ever going to find out? And fortunately, again, with Dr. Brown's research, he came up with these documents that showed uh, these names. Well, you know, oftentimes blacks took on the surname of their so-called master. Many of us have the names of people who plantations our people came from. Well, in this case, the Black Seminoles took on the name of their owner. Uh, as Mr. Griffin mentioned, to be a slave of a Seminole was not to be like a chattel slave of a European. You had pretty much your own autonomy as long as you paid your portion of your harvest to the chief. And so Prince was owned by Peter McQueen, who was also a mixed um, Native American. 
And Prince, what happened to him? He ran away. Again, Scipio down here, Sipsa, as they've written it in, but we believe it's Scipio, and he was Bowlegs, uh, one of Bowlegs slaves. And what happened to him? He ran away. And these two names, Prince McQueen, Scipio Bowlegs, are very important in the history of those who wound up on Andros Island. Now again, some of the, uh, the battles wound up moving a lot of the Black Seminoles west, and I'll talk more about that later. But a small number, we would believe anywhere between 200, 250, actually escaped over to the Bahamas. Now the Bahamas at that time was controlled by the British. The British were uh, friends or allies of the Seminoles. They had been trading partners, etc., And they had given assurances to the Seminoles that if the Americans try to intrude upon your land or you, know, you need our help, come and we will, we, will, uh, we will help you. So on three occasions, the Seminoles took delegations to Nassau, uh, which is right here, the capital, and they were turned away. So they knew they had to get out of Florida because it was 1821, Angola had been destroyed, a lot of blacks were trying, to, the, whoever escaped were trying to run uh, and get away from the United States any way they can, they could, because the United States officially took control of Florida in 1821. So they wound up traveling to this little community that they established called Red Bays. And it was on the northwestern corner of the largest island in the Bahamas. And it's only about 150 miles off the coast of Florida here. And many of them left from around the area of Miami, specifically a place called Cape Florida, which is today known as Key Biscayne, and it has been named as a place on the Underground Railroad's network to freedom. That's an important item, too. Most of us have heard about the Underground Railroad, and the story we're always told is that the slaves ran north, following the North Star. But Florida was actually the southern route of the Underground Railroad because of the edict of the king welcoming blacks here and the Seminoles welcoming blacks into, uh, to help them fight against the Americans trying to push them off their land. This was a place of freedom in many cases for uh, African people and the National Park Service, which I'll talk a little bit about later, has really recognized that and is calling Florida uh, this destination on the Underground Railroad, the southern destination. But this uh, picture of the island here, you see it's in different shades of green, and the lighter colors indicate that the land was very shallow and marshy, and no one really lives on that. Most of the people live on the right-hand side of the island, over here in all these communities. But one of the reasons they settled over here is because they wanted to remain unseen, unknown. And their first arrival, uh, we know from this document, was around 1821. This British, British customs officer named Bethel uh, discovered, quote unquote, these people living on this piece of land on Andros Island, and he says, with reference to the latter clause of my letter to you, dated August 6, 1828, I beg to inform you that I have thought it my duty to make seizure of 97 foreign Negro slaves, which have been illegally brought here from a foreign colony and whose names are hereunto attached. Now these 97 foreign Negro slaves were taken to Nassau. They're, they the British were under the mistaken impression that the Spaniards, who had continued the slave trade after the British abolished it in 1807, that they, they were mistakenly uh, thinking that the Spaniards had dropped these people off in this remote place and were planning to come back and pick them up 
and take them to one of their plantations in the main, on the mainland or in South America. They found out later that that was indeed not the truth. Uh, some of these people pr produced documents that they had been allied soldiers with the British in the Battle of New Orleans and had been allies uh, and had received certificates of good conduct and things like that from the British. And so they were returned to uh, the uh, land where they were taken from on Andros Island. Now, in that list of names, that 97 foreign Negro slaves, we find the names of the people who were on that list of people who ran away from Angola. Prince McQueen, that's where the star is, up at the top, and Scipio. Here's Prince McQueen and Scipio and his either children or wife or Scipio, Johnny, and Phoebe Bowlegs. So these people, now we have this connection between Angola and Red Bays, where, so that we know now that some of the people who did escape from there wound up in actually achieving freedom eventually in the Bahamas.